Salang YouTube, this is Yan. I have been in Iran for over 20 days now and now I have figured out how things work. So in this video, I would like to give you 9 very useful practical tips for traveling to Iran, especially for those who plan to visit the country for the first time. And let's start with money exchange. Since Iran has been under sanction for many years, international credit cards such as Visa and Master don't work here. So calculate in advance how much money you need and bring enough cash, preferably in US dollar or in euros. And once you are in Iran, you can go to one of the many exchange offices. And remember to compare the rate because each office have a different rate. So you can select the one with the best rate. And don't trust Google rate because it's not accurate at all and don't go to the banks because they have very bad rate. And finally, I don't advise you to trade with the individuals outside the exchange offices, uh, although there are a lot of them. And very often they ask for our commission fee, which makes the exchange rate in the end even a bit lower than the rate offered by the offices. The second thing is a weekend. In Iran, the real weekends are Thursday afternoon and Friday. So if you want to renew your visa, if you want to exchange money, get a SIM card or go for big shopping, don't go on Thursday afternoon and Friday because the shops and offices were very likely to be closed. Let's move to SIM card. In Iran, the most recommended SIM card is Iran Cell. It has faster internet. And when buying the SIM card, remember to tell them that you want 4G internet. Otherwise, it might give you 3G, which is very slow. And I paid for my SIM card for 30 gigabit, almost 1 million riyal, which equals less than $4. And remember, as a tourist, the SIM card is only valid for 30 days, so after 30 days, you need to get a new one. The internet in Iran is painfully slow. You won't have a problem browsing the pages, but if you want to upload a video like me, it can take really long. For example, one gigabyte video takes two to three hours. And besides, since there is a strong censorship, you need a VPN to access websites such as YouTube or Facebook. So if you are planning to come to Iran, be prepared for the slow internet and get yourself a VPN. When it comes to filming, you have to be very careful in Iran. Don't point your cameras at military infrastructures, police stations, public buildings or even metro stations because those objects are not allowed to film. For the drones, remember that a drone is often called a quadcopter in Iran since the word drone is often associated with a military weapon. Some websites such as UVA Coach said that if you attempt to bring a drone into Iran, it will be confiscated at the border. But to my knowledge, that's not entirely true. There is no evidence showing that bringing a drone in Iran or owning a drone in Iran is illegal. My drone was not confiscated at the border and other travelers have also brought a drone into Iran. However, Flying a drone in Iran requires lots of paperwork and permits, so I do not advise you to fly it without permissions because that might get you into serious trouble. When it comes to transportation, overall Iran is very well connected by buses and trains and maybe because of the low gasoline price, transportation in Iran is in general quite cheap. Buses are often the most convenient way to travel between cities. For longer rides, you can take the night bus. Those VIP bus often have very big seats and is spacious and you can lie down and sleep on the bus very comfortably. A typical ride, for example, from Isfahan to Tehran lasts about six hours and costs about $5. Trains are less common, but most of the major cities are collected by the trains. Train rides in Iran are very comfortable, but they are often slower than buses. What may surprise you is that Iran can offer one of the world's 
best train rides. By that I mean luxurious train rides with a minimum price. For example, the train ride from Tehran to Mashhad. If you travel with a FedEx train, you're going to experience the five-star service on the train. I've rode with FedEx train once and I was quite happy about it. For longer distance travel, such as from Tehran to Mashhad or from Tehran to Shiraz, I highly recommend that you take the train because you can sleep very well on the train and experience the quality service. Within the cities, I often use the Snap to take a taxi. The Snap is like a Iranian version of Uber, and due to the low gasoline price in Iran, taxi rides are fairly cheap. For example, a ride of 20 minutes in Isfahan takes only about less than $1. When it comes to accommodation, you have a lot of choice in Iran, from luxurious hotels to budget hostels. Since booking and Airbnb don't work in Iran, you can use other websites such as hostelz.com or iran.firstquest. And the simplest way is just to make a phone call and book the room from the hotel directly. And one of my favorite things about Iran is that many of the guest houses or hotels are in beautiful Persian courtyard and the stay itself is also an authentic cultural experience. When it comes to traveling cost, Iran is quite a cheap destination. The accommodation costs around from 10 to $25, a proper meal costs from 2 to $5, and the bus and train tickets are not expensive. The entrance ticket to attractions costs from $1 to $3, so in total a daily average expense of $20 to $40 should be enough. As a final tip, I want to say that Iranian people are very warm and friendly. They have a tradition of hospitality. If you are walking on the street, many people would say hello to you. And if that happens, just respond with salam or salam alaikum, which means peace upon you. And you will also be very likely to be invited for tea or for dinner or even adopted by a Iranian family. They are very happy to show you their culture and country. I came to Iran without knowing anyone, but when I about to leave Iran, I made so many friends. So if you are open to this Iranian hospitality, you could possibly make the best experience in your trip. That's the end of my traveling tips. In the end, I want to say that Iran has been one of my most favorite country. I had so much fun here and I hope those information will be useful for you. And if you like it, please give me a thumb up. Thanks for watching and see you next time.